Welcome back. I'm Sherry Jackson, live in Montgomery in front of the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, where people have been coming in since this opened to the public on Thursday. And we've been getting an opportunity to talk to a lot of the people from our area, local lawmakers who have gotten a chance to experience what's happening here. Of course, the buildup has been years in the making. Joining me now is State Representative Wandelin Gavan, who uh, has come to Montgomery on this special day. We know that what this is about, the Equal Justice Initiative and racial reconciliation in our country. In Alabama, we talk about civil rights. People come here. What does this memorial mean for people to come here and reflect on this part of our history? Well, for me, I represent the area in the city of Birmingham around the civil rights district. And for me, I, I'm always reminded of the 16th Street Baptist Church where four little girls in 1963, Sunday school, were brutally killed in Birmingham, Alabama. I am reminded of Bloody Sunday. I make that pilgrimage to Selma almost every year. And to come here and to see the thousands of people who come here to this museum opening. We're just a few feet away where many slaves, thousands of slaves were docked just a few feet away from here. Trafficking has always been a part of our history. I know we look at human trafficking from the sex, from the sex standpoint of human trafficking and sex, a sexual standpoint of, uh, uh, with regards to that. But mm -hmm. for me, I look at it for my people. We were brought here, we were traded off, and for this museum opening today and to see all of the people, the diverse people, it's amazing. That has been um, remarkable. We know that at the Civil Rights Institute, education is a big part mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. To know that what people are learning about lynching and the terror that people endured, when you think about those people of the Civil Rights Movement, the Fred Shuttlesworth, how, how courageous they had to be knowing that this was part of that legacy that they were standing up against. Fred Shuttlesworth, for me, I spoke at his funeral. I considered Fred Shuttlesworth, I just celebrated his birthday just a few weeks ago. Um, the Freedom Riders, all of these people who fought for us to have the right to not just stand here, but the right for us to have the level of diversity that we have here now in this country, not just in the state of Alabama. And for me, it's, it's a moment. Anytime we have these type of moments that bring about unity, that bring about and breed a culture that unites us to educate us about civil rights, that educates us about different cultures, different beliefs and values, right. and to also speak a language to say that it's okay to be different. It's okay that my black may be darker than yours, mm -hmm. but it's still beautiful, and that we all matter. I want to thank you for taking time to speak with us because I know there, there's a lot of personal reflection going on for mm -hmm. everybody who gets mm -hmm. to come here. State Representative Wanda and Gavan. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, we will have much more here from Montgomery coming up at six o'clock. We've gone out into the community and the rest of the places here. One of the stories we will bring you is that of Anthony Ray Hinton, who spoke at the second day of the Peace and Justice Summit. Uh, his story about being incarcerated wrongly in Alabama for 30 years on death row, how he got out of prison and what his mission is today. 